Okay, Gretchen, we're back. I should say Gretchen and Maria and John, hopefully. <laughs> well, we're back too. Well, yeah. Okay, so you're back. As well. So, we're going to talk about forms of energy. Um, one thing I should say about energy. So, there's the two main types of potential and kinetic, right? Potential is stored energy. And there's all kinds of ways of storing energy from chemical storage devices like a battery to a uh, crane lifting a big heavy piece of metal high in the sky. Well, that's stored mechanical energy. She could let it go. What's that? Yeah, so now it's stored in the gravitational field of the Earth is where that energy got stored. It seems like a big storage container, doesn't it? <laughs> Such a big storage container that we use it a lot. That's what... You ever wonder what makes spacecraft go around the Earth? Space, space satellites and all that? What keeps them going? What keeps them going? Yeah. Do you, you really think we make giant rockets that keep them going around the earth? I've wondered that part. <laughs> Why do they keep going? I don't know. Okay, so so here's the earth. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes, but what is it about that gravitational force force towards the earth that allows them to keep going? So we send a rocket up. Yeah. And we send it up. It goes up, and then we then we start we return the rocket so it's running tangent or parallel to the surface of the earth. Mm -hmm. And we give it a lot of speed, and then the rocket burns out and it's all done. It goes away. And it's just a satellite there, and there's no rocket on it at all. How does it stay up there? Well I know how it come back down, but I know how it stay up there. Why does it stay up there? Well because we no stored a whole bunch of energy going up, right? We're, we're storing potential energy as we go up in the rocket, right? And then we give it a whole bunch of kinetic energy going this way. Parallel to the surface of the Earth. And as long as it has enough potential, enough kinetic energy, so that the force, which always points straight down, Such that as it falls, the amount of distance it falls while going in this direction is equal to the is thing. equal to the, the curve of the earth. The curve of the earth. Yeah. So we give it just enough kinetic energy, and keep in mind in outer space, how much friction is outer is in outer space? In outer space, it's not. Um, okay. Virtually zero. Except the. You, light. you do know that satellites do fall back to Earth eventually. Mm -hmm. It just takes a very, very long time. Cool. Cool. So the ones that are close to the, sur to, the, to the surface of the Earth. The <laughs> system. Imagine if you fall back in your backyard. <laughs> that would be weird. That actually happens. People have had pieces of satellites fall in their backyard. That would be cool. People have had asteroids go through the windows of their, or the roof of their house. That would be cool. That's going to burn down the house, though. No, it's not that hot. It's not that hot? Nope. Because it reaches terminal velocity. Huh? <laughs> okay, so when an object's falling, we usually talk about, well, it's just the force of gravity pulling down, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and it's accelerated at 9.8 meters per second squared. So it should keep going faster and faster and faster and faster. And then it would fall. So. so if you jump on an airplane, you should keep going really, really fast. Well, if you go this way, well, this way you don't go. Well, why not? I don't know. It's a weird thing. <laughs> it's because there's a whole bunch of air here. And they have to cut through the air? Well, the air is not moving. Yeah. Well. Wow. And so we have to use some of our energy that we've stored, the potential energy that we've stored flying up so high. And as we release it, we also impart some of our kinetic energy to the molecules. As we fly down through them, we gotta push those molecules out of the way. All those nitrogen and oxygen molecules. They gotta get out of our way. I mean it's proportional to the surface area. So when you fly fat flat and you fall, you got more surface, therefore you're pushing more molecules. 
So you're giving some of that kinetic energy away to the molecules. And at a certain point, you keep speeding up even though that there's air in the way, until the force due to the air pushing up against you, right? And the force due to gravity are exactly the same. Then you stop speeding up. And so that's what an asteroid coming in, a small one, not a big one, giant one, would be virtually zero. But now it has a lot of momentum, but we'll get into that. Okay. But a small, a small one pretty much is like a person jumping on an airplane. They reach, they reach about 300 miles an hour, and that's all the faster they go. 300 miles an hour? Yep. I just had some fun. So they, 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 they probably come into the atmosphere. Here's our atmosphere. Oh. Of the Earth, um, they come in at some angle, probably at somewhere around 22,000 miles an hour, and they start to slow down as they fall until about here they reach about 300 miles per hour. So they're heating up, heating up, heating up, heating up, and so. By the time it gets to this speed, it's lost a lot of its mass to vaporized. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, maybe a tenth of the size it was when it started coming in. And then it's still got, you know, 10 miles to fall before it hits the ground at 300 miles an hour. And so that's not very long. It's got a lot of air flowing past it still. Mm -hmm. And it's not heating up anymore. It's cooling down. So all that heat gets dissipated long for the most part before it hits. It's still hot. It's just not necessarily going to burn down your house. Okay, so let's go back to energy. Forms of energy. So what I was going to say about potential energy is everything has potential energy except uh -oh. This first type of energy we're going to talk about, and that's radiant energy. That's the radiant energy, is that like light? That is light. That is exactly what radiant energy is. It is light. Light is the only thing in the universe <coughs> that doesn't have potential energy. It only has kinetic energy. And it's hard to explain what light is because it has energy, right? I meant to look this up, and so I'm not really going to get into it, because I didn't look it up. But energy is joules, and it has mass, but light doesn't have any mass. Sorry. Huh. <laughs> it's got energy. Yeah, it's just energy. it doesn't energy. have mass. Huh? It doesn't have mass. It doesn't have mass, hmm. but it is energy. So, how does that work? Well, we haven't talked about momentum, so maybe I just won't answer for now. When we get to momentum later in this chapter, I'll answer. So remember to ask me. Okay. Something about light. But you need to understand momentum before you can understand how light can like can have energy but without mass. That's a really weird picture of the sun. That's a really weird picture of the sun. Yeah. Look at that picture of the Earth right there. <laughs> No, that's the size of the Earth relative to the Sun. That's tiny. That is very, very tiny. <laughs> I don't remember what the calculation is, but it's... A lot of Earths will fit in the Sun. Yeah. We had it in our last science book last year. Yeah, I don't remember I how many it is, but it's... Jupiter's. Many thousands of Earths will fit in the Sun. Oh, by the way, we'll lose one class period next Thursday for science. For science? Bold. Because? We're going bold. No, we won't. Why are we going to have to do it? We're going to miss some math. Period. <laughs> I'm going to have your science. Okay. Huh? Huh? You skipping math then? Huh? I'll skip math. It's easier to make up math than it is yeah. science. In fact, we can make it up in the next couple of days. So we'll have science first thing in the morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to, I, I'm definitely going to make an effort not to miss any science classes. So we'll have to... So, radiant energy is light, okay? All light, not just the stuff you can see. What other kind of light is there? Uh, 
There's X rays, uh, microwaves. Ultraviolet, infrared. Nope. Microwaves. Radio waves. AM radio waves. FM. Is there FM? Yeah. Yeah, there has to be. That's just a particular bandwidth. It's just, FM is just a certain length of wave. Gamma rays. Gamma rays. Gamma rays are the highest energy. Yeah, light. those are like really close together. Mm -hmm. Yep, so the wavelength. <laughs> Visible. Very small. Frequency is very big. Whereas AM radio waves, some of them are literally this size. <laughs> I can see why they get all fuzzy. <laughs> yes, the longer the wave, easier it is the, to yeah, the easier it is to have it. <laughs> so really what it, a radio signal actually is a wave packet. It actually has other way. It's actually like this. So the w the wavelength that you tune to is the long wave. But it's actually so if I draw the wave, oh, I have, there we go. Now I got a full wave. So what the wave really is is something like this. And so if I draw this matches. Now we got, now I can it directly, let's turn this again, really something that looks like this. It almost looks like D. D and A. <laughs> yeah, almost, <laughs> like but not. Like that. So then you remove this, this is just oh. an aid to help me draw. And then it just goes far in. So this was that was just an aid to help me draw it. So that's what it, that's 